Hello everyone and welcome back. It is part two of exploring art galleries in Tribeca and our next stop is Silke Linder Gallery. This is an exhibit by the Polish artist Barbara Veselowska and this is her first show in the US. She just graduated from the Royal College of Art in London in 2015 so her career is really just starting to ramp up. The thing that stood out to me the most when first seeing her works is the color palette. It's unusually muted in a time where I feel like it's trendy to use these bright colors, but because it's not following that particular trend, there feels like there's this old world timelessness to them. And that comes from her childhood. She was raised in a very strictly religious family in Poland on an island owned by the Catholic Church. And all of this exposure to, quote, medieval paintings, figurines and saints, Christian iconography, rituals, and frankly, Catholic guilt <laughs> highly influenced her paintings. And if you look closely, you can see that faces slowly emerge. So these kind of represent the subconscious and the little voices that we can hear in our heads, especially when we do something that we feel is wrong. The next stop is Bortolomy Gallery to see an exhibit by the artist and choreographer Madeline Hollander. And if you're not familiar with her work, everything she's involved with centers around movement. One of my favorite exhibits of hers was with Gagosian probably five years ago with Urs Fischer, where she choreographed office chairs to move around the gallery and even interact with the viewers. It was really, really fun. And this exhibit has a similar element of play. The next room contains two different types of sculpture. There are three large aluminum trefoil knots and six mirrored sculptures. The trefoil knots are shaped to be in continuous motion once they're tapped, although I will say they look fairly static right here. These sculptures were the most fascinating, in my opinion, because they're an optical illusion. The rotating little sculpture looks like it's floating on the surface of this domed mirror, but it's actually inside of it, and I just found these to be really intriguing. This is an exhibit of works by the Irish artist Kieran Murphy, who's had a number of shows with Grimm Gallery, although this is his first solo show at their Tribeca location. 
Murphy's paintings are all about the concept of image making and how when you create a painting, you're capturing so much more than just a reproduction of an object. You're capturing atmosphere and sensation. And this makes sense because you're not really sure what you're looking at, or I'm not at least when I first see the photographs. I was wondering, is it a painting? Is it a photograph? It's not completely clear. And this is due to the special process that he uses when he creates his works. So when Murphy creates a work, he starts with a captured image or photographs that he then cuts and collages on the canvas in order to play with scale. And once he finds a composition that feels new and interesting to him, he then renders it in oil paint and applies a variety of techniques to it so that it's just a soft imprint of his original composition. The next stop of the day is Almi and Resch Gallery's fairly new Tribeca space. It opened last September, and this is an exhibit of works by the LA-based artist Daniel Gibson. Gibson's work is highly influenced by his Mexican heritage. Both his parents immigrated from Mexico, and when they first moved to the American Southwest, Gibson was exposed to the desert and the various communities that lived there, and that informs his work. The show is titled Big Sky, and it explores the, quote, push and pull between the earthly and heavenly realms. And in them, Gibson captures this feeling of smallness that one can experience when faced with expansive nature. Gibson has also included faces and figures frequently in what are predominantly landscape works, and he's done this to reference nature's regenerative cycle of life, birth, and death, and how we as humans are very much a part of it, especially in death when we become a part of the sublime. Our final stop of the day is to Jack Shaman Gallery's brand new space in Tribeca, which is an Italian Renaissance revival building and former Bozar Bank Hall. This is an exhibit by the Irish photographer Richard Moss titled Broken Spectre, and it consists of photographs as well as a video installation that we'll see upstairs. To create his photos, he uses Kodak Aerochrome, which is a false color infrared film, which registers light that is invisible to humans, with which he hopes to help, quote, create a new perspective on conflict. This triptych captures a river in the Amazon rainforest where there are sawmills producing tropical hardwoods that have been harvested from the rainforest, mostly illegally. This diptych captures illegal gold mines in the Grapori National Park, which is a protected preserve in Brazil. 
These mines use extremely destructive means to extract the gold, which then poisons all life forms in the river as well as the surrounding rainforest. Upstairs, we have two more photographs capturing oil spills on Quichua territory in Peru. And these spills happen due to a pipeline that was abandoned in 2015 and never maintained or dismantled. This video installation is really the heart of the exhibit, and this is a 60 foot wide LED screen where, like many of the photographs we just saw, this video was filmed in the Amazon basin, quote, capturing the exponential destruction of the Amazon from 2018 to 2022. Over the last 50 years, mass deforestation, willfully carried out by millions of people, has wiped out more than one-fifth of the original rainforest. And this video is meant to, quote, create a visceral and emotional connection with the world's largest rainforest, the world's last great reservoir of biodiversity, being devastated on multiple fronts for corporate profit. I should note also that this video was created by Richard Moss, but also filmed and edited in collaboration with the cinematographer Trevor Tweeten, and the musical composition is by Ben Frost. Here's a little view of just how gorgeous this building is. It's also hard to tell by this video, but this space is absolutely massive. It's 20,000 square feet with these 29 foot high ceilings. Nick Cave will have an exhibit here in September. So I'm really excited to see what he does with this space. And that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you all next one when we explore some shows in Chelsea.